continuing on in our series of photo books that I definitely think that you should buy. Um, I have a book called Rainy Road Today by an artist named Salim Ahmed. Um, Salim is a, a wonderful photographer and probably an even better human. Um, Salim and I went to graduate school together, though different years, and that's where I met him. And very quickly I found that we were kindred spirits uh, in our uh, approach, I think, to thinking about the world and photography and the things past the things that we see and also uh, an affinity towards uh, motor vehicles and uh, <laughs> old Toyotas and things of that nature. Um, this book, I can say I actually didn't buy. I remember I checked my mail one day and there was this box and I thought, oh no, I have ordered a book and <laughs> didn't realize it. I've spent money that I didn't have to order a book. And it was from Salim and I was really confused and I uh, opened the box and there was this beautiful book inside of it. And Salim, he had done a short run, the first edition of this book, and he sent it to me, just, just sent it to me. Um, uh, what a kindness to share such a beautiful thing with someone and that he would think to send this book uh, to me, uh, especially. Um, and so I just thought I have to share this book. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful work and he has a second edition out that you can get right now and I would strongly encourage you to do that. Okay, so Rainy Road. Now I'll confess I don't know a lot about um, the history of the work other than it's my understanding that Salim's mother grew up on this road, Rainy Road, uh, and she, um, well, this, I think this, when I see this book, when I go through this book, it reads like a, a love letter to his mother. Um, I get such a sense of affection he has for his mother, but I think this is going to be very apparent as we work through the book. Um, I guess before we start, um, the, it's a hardcover, beautiful, um, uh, gold kind of like uh, embossed um, title there. Uh, it's an open binding, which is really neat. I always love books like that. And so it opens and lays really flat and really beautifully. Um, the paper is nice and thick. It almost feels like uh, paper that you would use in an inkjet printer or something. So each thing feels like its own print. Um, we start off with this archival photograph. I assume it's of his mother. Again, I don't know 100% sure. That's how I read it. And as we enter into this world, we get a context of the life that his mother has lived and the sacrifices that she's made um, for her family. Um, the work that has been involved in where and how she grew up, um, the uh, in some of Salim's writing about the work, he says that uh, Rainy Road, there's this river beside with this beautiful you know, skyline and everything. And the word rainy actually means, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, princess. And so I get a sense that his mother very much was of the working class as she grew up and the thought of living on the princess's road, I'm sure um, was not the life that she lived, yet there is such a beauty and majesty to this person. And I get that sense that how Salim sees his mother um, might fall in line with being a, a royalty. This has to be a picture of his mom because it looks so much like Salim. Uh, a lot of things I see a lot in his work. He has this affinity for these very lush greens and reds. He just sees greens and reds in this like kind of, I don't know, lush is always the word that I think about. In the world that he creates with the photographs, in some way, it feels almost like a palace. Um, it doesn't feel like, I don't know, maybe less than. 
Maybe so. Again, the reds and the, he just sees the color red in such a, uh, a beautiful way. And what we have in a book like this really is this kind of like quiet, the, some of the ways that this picture put together are so delicate. Um, this quiet uh, world that we get to meditate on. Uh, I wonder what his mother thought about as she grew up. I wonder what she hoped and dreamed to be. I wonder um, who she wanted to be, who she hoped to be in the backdrop of the world that she was living in the world, her reality, her social class, whatever that might be. Um, I love this pairing so much. And the way this tree bends over here to these beautiful flowers. This, uh, in this post right here at the very top, it says, all is for the best in the best of possible worlds. And kind of this like idyllic house compared to this little, it looks like a maybe a lunchbox or something, but with a cover over it. Whenever I work through this book, I, you know, you, I, I think it's impossible not to look at work and not view it through your own experience. Not that that should be the only way we view work. I definitely think we need to look at it within the context of how and when it's made and who made it and where it was made and all these things. But for me, I, I get such a sense of like the loss of a dream, like having aspirations and never quite being able to receive them or that that dream changed. Um, maybe there was an appreciation for what was rather than what could have been. Um, this is a, a narrative that I feel like I can, <laughs> I can definitely connect with on the other side of the world. I really like how the pages, you can't tell from the video, but they're these just thick, like hardy paper. Selene paid such attention to these small details and these textures. And, um, you know, I would think about sitting on this swing possibly and my hand just catching, catching the fringes of this material. I wonder how much of this comes from his own life and experience in childhood even. Um, I assume a lot of this is in his mother's childhood home or in and around his mother's childhood home. It's hard to tell, and in some ways I'm glad that it's not overt because sometimes the more overt and strictly documentary we are with our images, we don't allow our viewer the space to personalize and connect with those, those images in that world. And I think leaving it somewhat mysterious uh, allows for a bit of that. Um, the color pairings here are nice. I also think about my family in Arkansas that uh, my aunt and my uncle who grow a lot of their own crops, even still in their, they've got to be in their 80s at this point, um, and they leave like potatoes to dry. I think these are onions though. Um, but again, I, complete different sides of the world, but what a common experience, what a connectedness and you know, maybe I'm partial to this work because I'm, I know Salim and I had the same experience whenever I met Salim is like, I felt an immediate connectedness to him. Um, even though our cultural experiences have been different, even though at the time, uh, you know, our belief systems and these, diff these things were somewhat different. Um, none of that really was a thing. Um, I felt again, like such a kindredness, uh, with him uh, as a friend and seeing his art also kind of confirms that kindredness. I love this. So we saw the image earlier of the road and kind of the, if I can get back to it really quickly, you know, this image 
of this area. This is what it calls back to in my mind of this like road that maybe she's stuck here, but this is the dream is to be here in this, this beautiful little palace area with these trees across the, it's always like across the, across the river. It's always better over there. That longing for uh, the thing that's just out of reach. And what we have is what we have. Um, so I think this work is, is fascinating because I feel the tension possibly that's being translated for that that dream that maybe wasn't fulfilled in the way that she thought it would be fulfilled. But in the way that things are also photographed, I get such an affection from Selim, her son, of the world that she lives in. So it's this strange uh, kind of these, these two things existing at the same time uh, within the book. That those types of um, undertones, those types of kind of intertwined narratives and intertwined perspectives uh, give such a richness to experiencing the work, you know. Uh, was she a princess? Is she a princess? Maybe she is. It feels like through Salim's eyes that she is. And what a beautiful way to honor uh, his mother. And this is the first time we see a contemporary photograph of her, or a new, you know, uh, photograph of her after seeing these archival photos. It looks like a bowl of milk on a scooter. Maybe? I think so. This form of this river mimicked in this scarf around here is a really beautiful pairing. You see that connection? And then here is kind of an explanation um, kind of from his mother's perspective of daydreaming and uh, the life that she lived as she dreams about the things, other things. And then I love this, uh, this last picture. I believe that's Salim with the, with the baseball cap on <laughs> asleep. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a note for me. Um, there was only 150 editions of this or copies of this, and he chose to give one to me. So, uh, this is one of those books that is, uh, definitely a treasure a uh, prized possession. And I'm sure that, you know, like I could say that about a lot of books, but this is one that's very personal to me um, on a lot of levels. And, you know, for me to think about someone that is making work, someone that is an artist that's able to transmit um, those feelings that he has about someone else, about his family and all that in such a beautiful way, um, just hits me deeply. And then if that same artist would think of me to send something like this is what a meaningful thing. So um, I would very much uh, recommend this book. You can get it on Salim's website, um, at least the last I checked, and I'll have a link for that uh, below. Um, and I would, I would strongly encourage you to check that out. Salim does a lot of self-publishing. Um, he has a lot of different varieties and price points of books and prints and things, which I think is wonderful for collectors. Um, so uh, you can look at this book, but there's also, I think he just published a book about his father not too long ago, and I don't have that one yet, but that's on the list uh, of two halves. Um, so check those out. Um, you won't be disappointed, I promise. So thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you next time.